Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, storehouse. Good morning. 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 Hallelujah. We thank God for bringing us here again once more to fellowship with Him and with the saints. And as we begin, I ask our sister Joan to open us in a word of prayer, please. Praise the Lord. Father, this morning we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you have already done and what you will be doing in our midst this morning. Father, we thank you that the Holy Spirit will flow in us. He will flow out of us. Lord God, and we give you honor for all that you will be doing. We thank you for your presence that flow from the front to the back upon each individual. We thank you for speaking this morning, for ministering to our spirit, man. We thank you for healing this morning. Healing is your children's bread. And Father, we thank you that you will heal every mind, every soul, every spirit in the name of Jesus. Let the Holy Ghost manifest in a special way this morning. Lord, manifest yourself as we continue to give you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Yes, can we give the Lord a clap offering this morning? Hallelujah. You know, I know it's uh, getting closer to uh, for Christmas. We celebrate the birth of our Lord. I celebrate the life of Jesus Christ. And today the songs we are doing, it's not really Christmas songs, but it's all based on three aspects of our Savior's life. It's focusing on his birth, his death, and his resurrection. Because we give God, we just want to thank God for the complete man. Jesus, he came, he bled, he died, and he rose again. And that's who we are celebrating this morning. Amen. Amen. And I want you to shut yourself in with God. As I always say, forget everything that's going on around you. Place your mind on him and on him alone. Allow him to, to reveal himself to you and to flow through you this morning. For I believe God is going to move in a mighty way this morning. I have come with an expectation that the Holy Spirit is here and he's going to do something in our lives today. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you. 
This morning we have come to praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. This is his time where we yes. tell him how much we love him. Yes, Lord. This is the time when we tell him, Father God, do what you Jesus, have to do. Jesus. Let us get out of the way of the Holy yes, Spirit Lord. moving yes, this morning. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thanks, God. Hallelujah. Jesus. He's the King of Kings. Amen. Yes. He is the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory. We were waiting without hope, without light. Till from heaven you came running, there was mercy in your eyes. To fulfill the law and prophets, to a burden came the word. From a throne of endless glory to a grave in the dirt. Thank you. 
atmosphere of prayer because the songs that we sing this last one we're going to do we want to surrender all to him we want him to move this morning so feel free the altar is always open as we sing the song and God leads you come down I got the word reconciliation. I was coming to church in, my, in the car, and God said, Reconciliation, Dorothea. Jesus. Reconciliation Jesus. brings transformation. Yes. 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 That's what he said. Jesus. If you really truly want. What God has for you, Jesus. you will accept the reconciliation yes. provided 
through Daddy God. Some of you have been hurting a long time. And you come into here with a smiling face. Some of you come in. If God had the arms to wrap around you, he would do it today, but you've got to allow him to do it. His love for you was provided through his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus. Here's the second part of Daniel. Jesus. Everybody talks about the spirit of Christmas. Listen to me. <laughs> that spirit is for every day. Yes. Yes. When it's only at this time, he said, because there's some that only come on Christmas and Easter. He said, because then they're more open to me then, because everybody's doing it. Yes. He doesn't want you to be like everybody in the world. He wants you for himself yes. every day. Yes, every breath you take, you. all the stuff that you have bared. Jesus. He says, give it to me. Yes. You are not to be burdened with it anymore. Jesus, Jesus bore your sorrows. Be reconciled to the God that loves you beyond your comprehension. Do not think with here, but allow him to come into you in the depths of who you are. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. oh Lord God, Jesus, help, Jesus, us. Jesus, help us. Yes, help Jesus, us, Jesus, help us. Help us. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. This morning, you can hear the heart of our sister. It's the heart of the Lord. He is speaking through her. But we have to totally surrender to him. Hallelujah, Jesus. For him to move, we have to surrender to him. For him to move in our lives daily and to expect blessings from him, we have to surrender. Hallelujah, glory to God. As we sing this other song, come and lay it down. Hallelujah, Jesus. The altar is open. Hallelujah, Jesus. Just have your divine will away this morning. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, take over. Take over. Take over. Take over. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. Here is where I lay it down. Jesus, 
are surrounded. Lord, hallelujah. Sister Sandra, Sister Sandra, could you come? Hallelujah. 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 We're going to pray for Sister Sandra this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We thank you this morning. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Father God. Touch her from the crown of her head to the very soles of her feet. In the name of Jesus, we claim total healing in this body. We claim healing, dear God. Healing is that children's bread, dear God. Hallelujah. We claim a healing. Hallelujah. Touch her, touch her. Restore, dear God. Restore. Restore this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Claim your healing, sister. Claim your healing, sister. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Claim your healing, sister. Hallelujah. He's the same God of yesterday, today, and forevermore. He is in the healing business. Hallelujah. If you would just believe. Hallelujah. As we leave it at the cross. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Those of you who need the healing this morning, just lift your hands. Lift your hands this morning. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Here is your children. Here is your children, God. You made them their father. In the likeness of you, God. Hallelujah. Their body is their God. It's a, it's a living their God. A living vessel. Their body is their God. It's a vessel unto you, Lord. And a sick vessel cannot work. A sick vessel cannot work, God. We need the vessels to be healed, their God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Heal your children so they can do what you want them to do this morning, God. That they can operate the way you want to operate by your spirit, God. Hallelujah. Healing. Healing on everyone this morning. Healing. Just claim it. Hallelujah. You know, the tap is open. The faucet is open. The water is running. Would you allow yourself to step under that water to get saturated with His presence, with His Holy Spirit? Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. As we receive this morning from you, we receive from you, God. Hallelujah. Healing, God. I pray for restoration this morning. I pray for a revival this morning. I pray that God that needs will be met. I pray for supply. Supply, dear God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I pray, I pray, I pray, God. I pray, Lord. I pray, God. I pray for your children. I pray. Father, 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 it's not my brother, dear God. It's not my sister that's standing in the need of prayer, but it's me, Lord. Start with me. Start the work in me, God. Hallelujah. Remove everything from my life that is not supposed to be there. Remove it. Remove it. Remove it, God. I want to be used by you. I want to be used by you and you alone, God. And I pray that your children will say the same prayer. Hallelujah, Jesus. Help them to move everything out of the way. Everything out of the way that's blocking their view. Bring clarity, God. Bring clarity in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I pray for Matt this morning. I pray that you would comfort this brother this time. Comfort him, dear God, in the loss of his mother. Bless the family. Give him the strength, dear God. Give them the strength, dear Father, in the name of Jesus. I give you praise. Keep on praising the Lord. I don't think God has done with you yet. I don't think God has done with you yet. Hallelujah. He wants more of you. He wants more of you. Total surrender. Total surrender. Brother Gary. Jesus. 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 
Jesus. Sometimes it's good to obey the Spirit of God Jesus. and let God do what He wants to do in your life. Jesus. And Brother Gary, Jesus. I hear the Lord is saying to you that He will heal you completely of every disease. Every disease. Every disease. It's under subjection in the blood of Jesus. From the top of your head to the very sole of your feet. Ah, God, in the name of Jesus. Spirit of God. Spirit of God. There is a healing mantle upon your life. What you've been asking God for, He said it is done. Jesus. It is done. Give God praise, my brother. Give God praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. If you can, you can be seated. Hallelujah. But remain in the atmosphere of prayer. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Deliverance. Deliverance. Yes. Right there. She says, I can't speak, but you can. God gave it to me. Yes. You hear me? Deliverance. Some of you in here, God wants to deliver today. Today. But sit in the heavenlies with yes. your Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Don't sit and, and just go out of here the same way you came in today. Daddy wants to touch you and he wants to wrap his yes. arms around you. Yes. Yes. Whatever was conveyed to you at a young age, God said, that is not me. You feel, you sense, you know me even right now. You're listening to the voice of a servant. But God wants to deliver you. And you sit. And you sit. And you sit. God says, stand up. Let the enemy know of your soul that you're not taking any more. You've had enough. He has taken enough from you. But you have allowed him to. Because today's your day to be set free. Amen. I hit the button. Bless God. Today, do not look at your past. Jesus. Stay away from the past. Jesus. Run from it. Yes. And look to Jesus, the author and finisher that he yes. wants to bring faith yes. in you greater than ever has been before. Keep going, Pastor. The Lord wants me to say it over you. His perfect love. His perfect love. His perfect love. His perfect love. If you will reach out and reach out to Him, receive His perfect love. It casts out fear. It casts out fear. You don't have to walk in it. Just reach out to Him. It casts out depression. Will you give it to Him? Will you receive His joy? His perfect love and joy. Today. Oh, my God. 
your heart. He didn't bring the pain. He didn't cause the pain. He didn't bring the sorrow. But he takes it away. Will you receive his love today? Will you receive his perfect love today? Will you call on his name? Call on his name today. Will you shout, Jesus? Take heed. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> I love you with my heart. Give me your heart. I want your heart too. Give me that love. I feel lonely because you don't come to me. I feel lonely because you are not with me. I feel lonely because you are so far away. Oh, and I'm here with you. I want to live with you. I want to stay with you. I want you to love me like I love you. Please come to me. I love you. I die for you. Oh, I cry for my son too. He died for you. It's not a thing. He is here to bring you down. Life, to give you joy, no more sadness, no more sadness. I will follow you. The blessings are at last. Get in it, get the blessings, get the blessings I give it you. They have no end. They have no end. Why? Why you stay away? You are mine. You are mine. You are mine. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You can tell the Lord is pleading. He is pleading with the speaker this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, I have a word. Um, for so long, I walked without help. I walked around and closed off and couldn't have the relationships that 
that I knew I should have, but I couldn't do it because I was so loaded down. And I reasoned through years and years of that prison, trying to figure out what was wrong. Why was it this way? Why was it that way? And it wasn't until I understood what seemed like I wasn't getting any help from God was this. I was standing, and this is my favorite place to talk about. I was standing in my own righteousness. Again, I bring this to our condemnation and to the people that are on Facebook. Or I was standing in my consciousness of my good works, of who I was. And what I was doing, I was arguing with the enemy of my soul. But I didn't realize it. I was arguing. I was getting in place because I was trying to figure out how I can fix her, you know? And I can't possibly talk to anybody about this because it's too personal. But I'll figure it out. Well, that righteousness <coughs> is as dirty rags. It is dirty rags. And any of us that are sitting here today that are thinking about your problems, and maybe you've never brought them to the Lord, maybe you have, and nothing's happened, and then you fall back into your own reasoning, that is wrong. And um, because it is God's righteousness that matters. That is it. That's where it is. That's where the victory is. No longer walking in who you have been, who you've been all your life. For me, it was like 40 years, 30 some years, I don't know. But I had closed off from my children. I couldn't have a loving relationship with my children. I didn't know how to love. I couldn't love my husband. I couldn't love because I was so closed off by the enemy. And, and that's not, if you were born again today, that is not the way we're supposed to be. We're not supposed to stand on our laurels. We must submit to God's righteousness yes. and put yourself in order with him. Yes. Know that if that is where the release and freedom comes. And then once you go to that righteousness, that place of righteousness, I've spoken about this before. There is the sunny side of the cross. Amen. The sunny side. Amen. And that side is where you can see. It has kept you back from loving and caring about people. It has been totally, I mean, it's wiped out. It was, it was like, it's all taken care of, Barb. And I was so full of joy. So full of joy because I then understood what salvation meant. There is not one thing that I have ever done that has, has not been covered by that, that cross, by the resurrection, the resurrection, the sunny side of the cross. And that's where we're supposed to all be standing. We are to all be standing on the sunny side of the cross because then, then we realize what God has done for us. Yes. That what the wonderful gift he's given to us. Jesus. I think I will always find myself planted here on this subject. I don't know why, but I think I will. And um, anyway, anyway, I can love. I love my kids. I love my husband. It's all good. Amen. It's all good. Amen. You know, if you go home the same way you came in today, that's really on you. My wife and I have been here for seven years, and I'm not sure I've ever heard the Lord pleading for this congregation more than today. As, as y'all were praying and my wife was speaking, about the spirit of Christmas. And it's not, you know, I almost don't like that term because Jesus came for us forever. Yes, yes that's it. It's almost a shame we take one time a year to remember. Right. I'm not getting on you, I'm just processing where my head is at. Mm -hmm. That's not the way it is for me. This is a daily thing. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Isn't it amazing that God Himself, when He chose to come to this earth, 
We're singing the song, I will make room for you. And all I can think of was there was no room for Jesus at the inn. Motel 6 was full. Embassy Suites was full. And he goes to a cave. Jesus. Birth is messy. I've never done it, but I've been there. And it's messy and it's noisy and it's uncomfortable and it hurts and your child comes out and they're all cheesy and you're like, what is this? I don't know what this is. <laughs> and it's messy. Yeah. Jesus, and Mary lays the Son of God in a feeding trough. Mm. Oh, Jesus. Mm. In a place that's messy mm -hmm. and smells like a barn. And we're reading in Isaiah that he's the wonderful counselor and the, and the mighty God. And the mighty God is laid in the feeding trough. <laughs> and I thought, Lord, couldn't there have been a more grand entrance for the mighty God? And you know what he said? No. Because mankind is a mess. And if I don't come down in the mess and get involved in the messy, there will be no redemption. And I will stop before I preach the rest of Isaiah chapter 9. So can we shift gears just a little bit this morning? Can we do that? Say yes, yes, Pastor, we can do that. Uh, Matt, would you cut these lights? Because I have a video I want to show. It's actually the slideshow we put together. I want you to look at the slideshow and see if you recognize some familiar faces. And there's music. Somewhere else is Gary and Yuna were there. Did you guys go to the um, the food pantry? Thank you. Yes. And Joan, you were at the food pantry. I was. I didn't know that. And Marcia was there. So I apologize for not getting your pictures. But here's what I want you to realize. Listen to me carefully, church. If you don't know this, we partner with a group called Christian Help, and once a year they put out this massive Christmas giveaway that takes. A gymnasium with two basketball courts inside. You saw all of that stuff. That is two 48 foot trailers from FedEx wow. delivered and sorted by age group and gender. Wow. Now, check this out. If you don't know this, we support Christian Help all year at this church. They're one of the nine ministries that we support. Actually, we're now up to about 11. We give to them financially every year. And many of you work there throughout the year. Marcia is there throughout the year. Miss Sandra works there through the volunteers throughout the year. I want to encourage you to get involved with Christian Help and help them throughout the year. If you want to know more, come see me after service. But for the Christmas thing, here's what I want you to see. Your generosity and your participation, check this out, minister to what? 261 families in the Central Florida area. 
touching the lives and giving presents to so much there that when it's done, they kind of put it all back together and they shuffle it off to other charities and they are handing out no less than uh, helping an additional 400 children, probably way over that. We touched the lives of over 1,000 children in Central Florida this year because of your generosity. Give yourself a hand, that's awesome. You guys truly are amazing. So, if you have any questions about Christian Help, come talk to me, we'll get you plugged in. They are an amazing organization. Are you ready to receive the word this morning? Yes. Well, we're in the middle of a series here, and the series is? Slide, please. There we go. And he shall be called. We started this two weeks ago. We're going to end it on Christmas Eve. So, by the way, Christmas Eve service is this Saturday. Only one hour from 6 to 7. We want you to be here for Christmas Eve where we'll conclude our series. But the Your pastor. So, would you please welcome this morning our brother, Mr. Eric Koshman. I'm going to need this for notes, water, <laughs> visual effects. Uh, we're going to run late today. <laughs> Sorry about that. But what you heard this morning is confirmation from God. I cannot skimp on this word. Um, the last song we just sang. We may be breaking down some of your traditions. We may be breaking some of the walls of your religion. Okay. Uh, very interesting. This is all about the other song we sang, King of Kings. The two words we heard from Pastor Dorothea are directly related to the word today. So, Lord, I pray I don't, I don't skimp and I don't miss anything. Father, by your Holy Spirit, may the words I speak, ah, uh, it's your words, it's your truth, Father. Uh, in Jesus' name. So, yes, he shall be called. Uh, so, we are going to take a look today at how our God, this is our loving, eternal, everlasting Father. Next slide, everlasting Father. There we go. How he is beyond all limits. He is our Savior. Yes, he is. I think that because of the words we've been receiving this morning, this makes sense. I'm going to take you on a little bit of a wild ride, so hang on. It may seem like a bit of a roller coaster, but I have to do a little road trip all the way through the Bible. So we're going to start at the very beginning. I thought of uh, Do Re Mi. Let's start at the very beginning. A very good place to start. When you read, you begin with A, B, C. Well, today we're going to begin with Genesis. So, in the beginning, God created us. And what did he do then? We can take a look at that. What I'm going to do today is I'm going to put us in the position of Adam and Eve. Picture it in yourself. You are there, okay? God walked with us. God talked with us. He had this very close relationship. We've heard about relationships this morning already. Relationship with us. So let's take this road trip through God's word. Then God said, let us, I do want to point out that in the Hebrew, it is plural. God said, let us make mankind in our image. Here we do need to pay attention sometimes to pronouns. In our likeness. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female. Well, that's another story. We won't go with it. But he created us. 
And God blessed them. God blessed us. But what happened then? I think a lot of you know this story. You know that sin came in. And what did God say when that happened? Let's take a look at Genesis 3, verse 13. This is from this is the World Messianic Bible version. The reason I use this one because I think the emotion comes through. The Lord God. Lord is capitalized. That's the actual name of God. Some of you may have been taught Yahweh. A little bit deeper, you might find out it's Yehovah. Yehovah, God, God, Elohim. Elohim is that plural version of God. Said to the woman, What have you done? Really, what have you done? You've ruined everything. This is God speaking to us. I'm serious. You destroyed it all. You destroyed our relationship. I can't be with you anymore because of sin. I am so holy. Sin cannot be in my presence. You've destroyed the close relationship that I had with you. I walked with you. and I talked with you. My plan is ruined. Get away from me. We ruined being able to live in that fabulous garden made just for us to walk with God. What happened next? Verse 23, so the Lord God banished him. Now it is, sorry guys, it's on us. From the garden of Eden to work the ground from which he had been taken. <sighs> I gotta wake up early tomorrow morning. I gotta go to work. Oh, man, do I get tired of working. I wish I could retire. <sighs> so, we were exiled. I want you to remember that word. We were exiled from the Garden of Eden. However, but there is hope. Now we're going to look at this hope. I don't know if you remember when you were a kid. You remember when you were little. And your father. Fortunately for me, I had a wonderful father. I really had a, a great dad. He was really loving. Uh, even when I messed up. We heard that word today. Messed up. Even when we had messed it up. Even when I had messed it up. And when I was punished. His love came through. I had a great dad. But unfortunately, maybe some of you didn't have a great dad. Maybe you had abuse in your home. The problem with that, because if we have a broken father relationship, we don't know who God the Father is. But we broke our relationship with God the Father. So we have a broken relationship. We heard about broken relationships already this morning. Well, we often read in the Old Testament, okay, that we, we, we get this perception that God is just angry. He's really mad at us, okay? He's terribly angry with us, and he seems like this real giant ogre. However, you read the Bible carefully, we get a different story. In Psalms 103, what do we see? The Lord is compassionate. Oh, gracious. He is slow to anger. And he is abounding in love. Yes. I love this passage. This passage occurs various times in the Old Testament. At least five times. Maybe more. Oh. This occurs various times. So God is so patient with us. He is slow to anger. He loves us. He is merciful. He is kind. And because he is our loving, compassionate father, God had a plan. He had a plan all along. He knew this stuff. 
even though we messed it up in the Garden of Eden, before God created the entire universe, we heard about the universe last week, God had a plan. All right. And he plans things perfectly. You can take a look at that. Absolutely perfectly. And what was this plan of his? What was this plan? The plan was to have us be with him all along, even though we had messed it up. We heard this morning already about being with God. So let's take a look at this. In Jeremiah 29, 11, 14. Here God is talking to the Israelites after they've been expelled. They've been exiled to Babylon. But this is more than just that. When God speaks through his prophets, some, it's more than just for that time. And I like what the message did. Some other ones say, only I know what I have planned for you. Here it says, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future you hope for. A little word we heard this morning, too, is coming up right here. When you call on me, when you come and pray to me, I'll listen. Pay attention. Pray to him. When you come looking for me, you'll find me. Yes, when you get serious about finding me and you want it more than anything else, I'll make sure you will not be disappointed. I'll turn things around for you. I'll bring you back from all the countries into which I drove you. I'll bring you home to the place from which I sent you off into exile. We were exiled from God in Eden. I will bring you home. We're going back there. You can count on it. This is a recurring theme, by the way, in the Old Testament. You really need to read it. Someone messes up, and God has a plan. God had a plan for Abraham, even though he and Sarah laughed at it. They thought it was funny. I'm too old. God had a plan for the Israelites, even though Moses had a hard time accepting it. I, I can't do public speaking, man. I can't preach a sermon. Are you kidding? Uh, God had a plan for the Israelites, even though they rebelled in the wilderness. He still had a plan to get them into the promised land. God had a plan even though Israel and Judah were captured and exiled to Assyria and to Babylon. He always has a plan. He always knows what he's going to do. So let's take a closer look at what this plan that God did. So here we go. Isaiah 9. It was a kind of a long introduction, but Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us, remember, we messed it up. And to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. He will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Two weeks ago, Pastor showed us about, about the Holy Spirit, that wonderful counselor that Jesus baptized us with. Jesus and the Holy Spirit together are our wonderful counselor. We heard from Brother Mark about the mighty God. How powerful, awesome, magnificent is our God. He talked about the universe, which, I'm sorry, is so beyond me. I, yeah. I can't understand it all. Totally beyond me. When he talked about that, he reminded me of a time when I was in the pool and I saw piece of dirt floating in the pool. I picked it up. I put it on the bricks. Lo and behold, it wasn't a piece of dirt. As I watched, it was the tiniest little spider I had ever seen. And it actually had an egg sack. It started to walk away. And it came back for its egg sack. Here I'm watching this. And I'm thinking, God, that spider has, what, six eyes? It's got actually a little brain. 
It walked away. It remembered. It had to go back for its egg sack. How did you ever do that? How did you put it into this little thing? I could barely see. Amazing. Just amazing. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit speaks to us now about this love. How your love, your eternal, everlasting love, how you are the everlasting Father and what you have for us. By the way, everlasting here in the Hebrew, uh, I probably isn't, I'm not going to pronounce this right. It's like an ab ab. It's a conjunction of two words. One part of it means father or grandfather. And the other part is of old ancient, forever, eternal, continual, always. I found this interesting. This is all from the concordance. Without any beginning or end. Remember that. Without any beginning or end. No time limit. Again, this is beyond our understanding. We cannot comprehend this. So, and so maybe you've heard, and maybe you don't know, but from that verse in Isaiah, Jesus is also that eternal, everlasting Father. Because of our broken relationship that we messed up in, in Genesis, we have this distorted view. We have a really distorted view of who God is. And we don't understand him because we can't. He is so beyond our understanding. But remember also in Isaiah chapter 7, there's another prophecy about Jesus' birth. The virgin will give birth to a son and he will be called Emmanuel, God with us. How can that be? And this is really, it's kind of a wild plan. So let's take a look. And let's take a look at this plan that God has to restore that relationship, to reconcile us back to him. So in John 3, 16, yes. so God so greatly loved, this love is so beyond our understanding, and dearly prized the world, the world here, it's not the earth, the world is us, yes. that he even gave his one and only begotten son, so that whoever believes and trusts in him as savior shall not perish but have eternal life. I like that the Amplified puts that in there because many people say, oh yeah, I know Jesus, I believe in Jesus, but do you trust him as your savior? Will not perish. For God did not send the son into the world to judge and condemn the world, that is to initiate the final judgment of the world. That's a whole other series. <laughs> but that the world might be saved through him, that we are saved through him. So many times I think we look at this and all we think about is Jesus. It's like the Ginsu knife, but wait, there's the rest of the story. What is certain is that our so we have this concept of called the Trinity. We sang about it today, King of, in the King of Kings. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But our final relationship is actually with God, the entire God, the entirety. So God is one. So let's see, what did God do? John 1, 1, it says, In the beginning was the word. I put this in here, verb. This is the Messiah. The reason I use the put in verb Portuguese traditional translations don't say word, they say verb. And the word, the verb was with God, and the word was God. The reason they use that is because it's rhema in Greek. It's an action word. It's an action verb. When God speaks, action happens. So, the Bible tells us that God wants to take us, by the way, it he wants to take us to his bosom. And I use the word bosom because I don't know what how else to put it. He wants to be with us. 
He wants to hold us. We heard that this morning. Pastor Dorothy had talked about and holding us. Because his joy is in the presence of his people. And we destroyed that joy in the Garden of Eden. Because of that relationship, his joy is to be with us. God wants us to be his children again. So he came to that which was his own, us. But we did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. He wants us to be his children. He, he wants to be that loving father. Again, I don't know if you've had this, where he just grabs us in his arms, holds us to his bosom. The word became flesh and dwelt among us and made his dwelling among us. Wow. Again, why did God do this? Why did God do this, really? When Matthew 18, 14, Jesus tells us, you know, he was talking to his disciples, in the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. God does not want us to perish. I like the message used a different term. It's called simple believers. It does not want any of these simple believers. We sometimes are the simple believers. I, I don't always get it. I'm simple. But hallelujah, that's not what my salvation is based on. Yes. Amen. So, but what happens is we have this very distorted view of the father relationship because we're broken. And the great thing is, I don't need to fully understand it, and I never will. Because God is so absolutely, he's marvelous. He is that wonderful counselor. He is that almighty, powerful God. He is the everlasting, eternal Father. It's beyond my comprehension. John tells us this in the Amplified Version. No one has seen God his essence, his divine nature at any time. The one and only begotten God, that is the unique son, who is in the intimate presence of the Father. He has explained him and interpreted and revealed the awesome wonder of the Father. So for us, it's wow. It's going to take an eternity. It's going to be taken an eternity with God for us to get to know him. Fortunately, we'll be able to spend that eternity with him. Let's continue to look at that God-Father relationship. So, Jesus completely changed the concept of God when he was teaching his disciples to pray. By the way, back then, the, the people, the 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 Israelites, the Jews, the Pharisees, Sadducees, it, it, the concept was, was not there that God was Father. It, it was God lived in the Holy of Holies. He would appear there sometimes. He was far off. He was distant. But Jesus said, but when you pray, go into your room. Close the door. It's a prayer thing is really important and powerful. And pray to your Father who is unseen. He's teaching us, when Jesus talks about the Father, he says, your Father. Yes. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. I've ex actually experienced that. Thank you, Father. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven. Now, Jesus teaches us to pray to the Father. Father, Daddy. We've heard this from Pastor Dorothea before. Abba, Daddy. He's our Father. We, too, can have this a misguided focus on this relationship because of our humanity. We can't quite grasp this concept of God. 
the Father, our Father. Wait a minute, God, the Son, the Son is given to us, and Savior, and Holy Spirit. So let me try a little demonstration. I wonder if you'll be able to see this up here. Uh, let's see, can you momentarily turn the slide off? Maybe turn off these front lights? Yeah, keep those lights off. There we go. I'm trying to get this here. Sometimes we look at God like this. You see the three separate dots? And there's dark space between them. We say one is the Father, one is the Son, one is Jesus, and one is the Holy Spirit. They're separate. They're actually not together. They're not merged. Turn on the lights, please. Again. Mentally, I think too many of us, and I've known Christians who think of God that way. Three separate things. There are, say, religions, if we're going to break down some of this religion stuff, that do teach God that way. That's, that's an incorrect perception. So, oftentimes, we think of God as three persons. Actually, I don't like to call them persons because God, God is much more than a person. A person doesn't convey that to me. We call this the Trinity concept, God in three persons, but I think that's the wrong word to use. So, doesn't convey the right, correct dimension. We tend to separate them, but they are not separated. Isaiah, God tries to tell us through his prophets, unto us is born a son who is wonderful counselor, the Holy Spirit, who is the Almighty God, who is the everlasting Father. So, Oh, let's see. Because God loves us so much, he sent Jesus, Yeshua, into the world to restore his goal, God's goal, of just being with us constantly, to be in his bosom, for us to be able to be held by him. He developed this plan. God would come to earth. God himself would come to earth as a man, to live the holy, perfect life, to redeem us. That's a whole other topic, just in being redeemed, to pay our debt. By redeeming us, he paid our debt so that he could restore the father relationship so that we can be with him for eternity. It's amazing, just absolutely mind-blowing, amazing plan. So he came to us, to be born this day in the city of David, the Messiah. But I want us to stop thinking of LBJ, not Lyndon B. Johnson or little baby Jesus. He's, we don't want to have our view distorted that way either. So he came to us to pay our debts, to pay us, to get us out of slavery. We were, we were enslaved because of sin. So Jesus tells us in Matthew, Matthew 11, 27, interesting, no one knows the Son. And who do we think the Son is? The Son is Jesus. No one knows the Son except the Father. And no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. So hope, hoping today the Son reveals to you who the Father is. If that's confusing, it's okay. The disciples didn't get it either. You know? And it, it's really hard for us to understand it too, because God is so beyond our mental capacity. So Jesus told his disciples, you know, you got a little frustrated with them. Don't you understand? So when you sit here, John 14, 9, 11, Philip, Jesus answered him, Do you not know me, Philip? 
even after I have been among you for such a long time. Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. They're not two separate dots. How can you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Amazing who Jesus is, the humility he had. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing his work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves because they had such a hard time understanding that Jesus is God. They didn't quite get it. So, Jesus said, I've been with you for three years. Can't you figure this out yet? <sighs> Sorry, no, we really can't. You've seen me, you've seen the Father. We cannot separate Jesus from the Father. There's not that black stripe separating the dots. Okay. Jesus tells us the Father and I are one. I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. So sometimes when you look at this, see, we get the, that wrong perspective. However, God wants us to understand that he is one. We have one God. He is the eternal Father, the everlasting Father. He is also Jesus who is the eternal father. Because of this whole plan of Jesus coming to earth is that God took on human form to redeem us, pay our debt, remember, so that God can finally restore, reconcile that relationship between us that was broken back in the Garden of Eden. Now we can have this eternal relationship restored, reconciled with God forever. So we understand this a little bit better. We don't see them as three separate dots anymore. Let's try this. As we change our focus here, can we turn the screen off again, please? Oh, it's, I see. You know, instead of, let me try to get this, instead of saying three separate dots, the closer we get and understand our relationship, get reconciled, get restored, they start to merge. It almost looks like one dot, but we can gently see the, the, the you can still see a, uh, you know, a three separate sections. They, they merge. By the way, it's not Mickey Mouse. That is definitely not Mickey Mouse. Okay, It's not separate ears. <laughs> They're actually merging. So, God is merged into one. Now, God the Father had planned this all along. Still not quite done. This is the goal, that we should have such intimate, close relationship that we see the eternal, everlasting Father in Jesus. The Son, Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit together, all in one. And this can also be evident as, a, as we look at the Advent season. This is the Advent season. Oftentimes we don't talk about it or emphasize it for some reason, the Advent season, but maybe we think it's too Catholic. However, it's very important because this is the time to remind us that Jesus is coming. Not just 2,000 years ago being born, but Jesus is coming back. Yes, he is. Oh. And he is coming back, and we'll see this now in the Revelation. That's where I had to start in Genesis, and I had to take us all the way to Revelation. That's what I'm saying. Try to stick with this. This is sewing it all together. In the book of Revelation, I think it becomes a little clearer that we'll see God the Father and Jesus as one. Starting in the first chapter of Revelation. I am the Alpha and the Omega. You've all heard this before. The beginning and the end. 
Just a second, when I go back to that Hebrew, what was that Hebrew word again? Let me find that. And that Hebrew word means without any beginning or end. We don't understand this because we're finite. But says the Lord God, who is, he's existing forever, he's that eternal, and who was continually existing in the past, and who is to come. So the continually existing in the past is also the understanding of the Hebrew word back in Isaiah. And who is to come, the Almighty, the Omnipotent, the ruler of all. I like how the, the Amplified gives us a little bit better understanding of that. It's very clear that this is God the Father speaking to us. Because he said this to John. He says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Yes. You know, the Alpha and the Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. Let's put it this way. He is A to Z. You all know what Z is. Good. I am the beginning and the end. Yes. Eternally. And it's beyond our understanding, our comprehension. Then let's jump to the very last chapter. This, very, this occurs very at the beginning of Revelation, now the very last chapter. Verse 22, verse 12 to 13. Behold, I, Jesus. It's, under, it's understood in that when you read that. This is Jesus now speaking to John. And coming quickly. I'm returning, our returning king. And my reward is with me to give to each one according to the merit of his deeds, earthly works, faithfulness. Jesus says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the first and the last, the beginning and the end. And the Amplified puts this in parentheses, the eternal one. This is clearly you know, Jesus speaking. He is returning soon. I think this helps us to understand that Jesus is God. You cannot separate Jesus from the Father. They're not two separate gods. They're not two separate beings. They are one. So, and what is Jesus saying here? He says, I am the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. The exact same words that God spoke in Revelation 1 exactly what God the Father just said. Jesus and the Father was one. So, Jesus is coming back for his bride, which is us. And what's he going to do? He's going to take us to himself and the Father. It's one. They're not separate. That is our destination. Restore, reconcile, to be with the one God forever. Jesus is God. Don't forget that. The takeaway here, folks, is that God loves you so much, so deeply, so immensely. He always wanted to be with us. He never wanted the separation. So he developed this doozy of a plan, this great plan. And I do like mysteries, and I like how I've seen mysteries unfold. This is this plan is so beyond any kind of mystery. It's just, wow, I love it. It's so involved, so detailed, and so intimate. He has this plan for you and I to be with him for eternity. He's reconciling us to the Father. The closer you get to Jesus, the more you will see the everlasting Father. Application here is for all of us. Pay attention to our relationship. Our relationship with God. So many times in, in Christianese we say, okay, you got to dig deeper. You've got to press in. Okay, I don't know if those terms quite hit it right. Okay, but I would just say this. Dude, get on your knees. Pray, worship, praise Him. He is the beginning and the end. 
He is the author of our life. He is the eternal, everlasting Father. He wants to hold us close in his bosom. When, when it's the closer you get, you just can't help but get emotional about it. It's just amazing. He created us to have this close relationship, and we messed it up back then in Genesis in the garden. But God says, wait a minute. I have a plan. I'm bringing you back from where you've been exiled to be in his bosom. All right. My takeaway for you today, quick, pay attention to that relationship that we have with God. God wants an intimate relationship with us. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We embrace them all. They are one. That's our destination, is that reconciliation of that relationship. Okay, to know God and to be with him forever. The second is important. Prepare for our king's return. He is coming. He is coming soon. Jesus, our king, our God, our father is returning. Get ready. When the final shofar blows, when the final trumpet blows, sorry, it's too late. You missed it. Third, if you want to know the rest of the story, I did this kind of quick, weaving a lot of different sections of the Bible. If you really want to know the rest of the story, read the book. Yes. Read the book. Yes. Yes. Start in Genesis and read it all the way through the Revelation. The reason I can sometimes pick these little things is because as I read the Bible, the Holy Spirit will point to something and say, wait a minute. I just read that somewhere. I read this in Jeremiah. Just a second. Way back in Revelation, there it appears again. Read the entire book. God will reveal himself to you that. So what I want to do is close with the ending from Jude. This came just yesterday. Jude was Jesus' brother. It's a very short book. We often don't hear much about Jude. It's the penultimate book in the Bible. That means the next to last. In Jude, verses 24 to 25. Now to him, God, who is able to keep you from stumbling. When we stumble, we damage that relationship. And to present you faultless, his righteousness. We heard about righteousness today present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. His joy beyond. Wow. I, to God our Savior yes. who alone is wise yeah. be glory and majesty dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. Amen. I get choked up a little bit sometimes. Can we thank Eric again? That was amazing. You can't nurture your relationship with God unless you have a relationship with God. And why is this so important that we understand the everlasting Father? Okay? Just, I think it's because, and I've talked to a lot of men throughout my ministry in over 40 years, and one thing I've learned is this. I won't say all, but many, perhaps most men, have a very distorted view of what a father is. Yeah. <clears throat> Either their father wasn't good, or their father was absent. Mm-hmm. You want to know one of the heroes in my life who truly amazes me? Her name is Dorothea. Because mm-hmm. yeah. her dad left when she was two. She saw him briefly, 
He returned back into her life after we got married. That's a whole funny story. We'll tell you it another time. But of all the people to not understand the love of God, my wife is among the chief. But she has had such a radical experience with God that she literally will say to him, Daddy, I need to talk to you. She understands the relationship. Some of you don't, not yet. But can I say to you from Gen Gen Genesis through Revelation, the short version is this. We screwed up. You can't say that in church, Pastor. Sorry, we fouled up. And God said, you know what? I'm not happy. But it doesn't change my love for you. In fact, because you messed up, I'm going to demonstrate my love to you. Because when do we need the most love? When we're a hot mess. It's easy to love y'all when you're good. God stepped in and said, I'm going to show you how much I love you. If you don't know that God today, I want you to know that God today. Can we close our eyes for just a minute? Father, I thank you for your word this morning. Thank you, Eric, for doing such a great job and bringing that and breaking it down to us. Lord, my desire for this congregation and those watching online is that we truly understand our relationship with a loving Heavenly Father. If you're here this morning and you're you're gonna you can be honest enough to say, Pastor, I don't have that relationship. I don't see God as a father, much less a loving father. I don't see that at all. Can you just slip your hand up this morning and be honest with me and say, you know what, I need to get to that place. And we'll pray with you, we'll stand with you, we'll we'll walk you through this. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Father, bring us all to that place where we know you in an intimate fashion. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. amen. So here's what I want you to hear this morning before we do some announcements. The Lord said this to me several years ago, and I love it. He said, this was a while ago, he said, tell folks that I'm not mad at them. I am mad about them. And that is a big difference. So I'm going to challenge you as we go into 2023. We're going to talk more about this later. I want you to press into a relationship with the Father that you've never experienced before. Where you get to that place where he is holding you close and you and the Father become one. Because you know what? You become like you hang around. Come on. Proverbs says that bad company corrupts. So what does good company do? It builds up and identifies. And my goal for you for 2023 is I want to see God in you because you're so close it's inseparable. Amen. Can we do that? Give the Lord some praise. All right. We have some announcements this morning. Um, but before we do our, this is actually part of our announcement. I got a short video I want you to see. Foursquare family around the world for 21 days of prayer and fasting. If you love fasting, say amen. Yeah. Okay, I don't believe you. <laughs> if you love praying, say amen. amen. Oh, 
All right, well, we're halfway there. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. We're starting in January. We're, they're going to see an announcement every week for this. And uh, Samantha, who is our media coordinator, she's going to actually be posting on our uh, website, our app, and on Facebook every day what we're praying for during those 21 days. So we're coming together with the worldwide church of Foursquare so that we're all in agreement to watch God do amazing, say amazing, amazing. and miraculous, say miraculous. Amazing, amazing and miraculous things because I'm just crazy enough to believe that God still does miracles. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. So listen to me carefully. Look at your pastor. Pastor, I'm not really good at fasting. Neither am I. <laughs> so I've had to modify things in my life. So I know what I'm going to do for 21 days, what I'm going to fast. So I'm going to encourage you to this. If fasting is difficult, I get it. But fasting is disciplining our body so that our spirit becomes more sensitive. Are you with me? So find something that you would normally ingest that you can give up. Kale doesn't count. <laughs> Pastor, I'm fasting kale. You don't even eat kale. Find something that is a sacrifice for you. I'm not saying give up all food, but find something. Maybe you fast Briar's ice cream and Entenmann's donuts. I don't know anybody who loves those, but just saying. I'm also asking you to consider this. Turn off social media for 21 days. Turn off all media for 21 days. There's nothing on TV that will make you love God. Nice. Turn it off. Facebook, TikTok, Instagram. I don't even know what's out there. All I know is we live in a crazy generation. A crazy time. Young man, young father was teaching his nine-year-old daughter to pray. And she prayed every night, and at the end of her prayer, instead of saying amen, she said, hit enter. That's how bad we've gotten in this society. Turn off your social media and focus on God. Listen for the voice of the Lord because he's not going to break through all of the other distractions. How many of you took, turned off social media last year for 21 days? It is an amazing time. You'll spend three days jonesing over it, but after that, God can break through and do amazing things. So 21 days of prayer and fasting. Real quick, we've got a few announcements. I'm going to go quickly and hit the important ones. Download our app. Next. If you're first, oh, Mountain Movers, you're not meeting the fourth Sunday of this month. You will be reconvening in January, correct? Swipe. Don't forget, we now have some coaching connections with Pastor Dale and Pastor Barb. If you need to just talk to them about anything in your areas in your life where you're a little bit stuck, reach out to them. They are fully equipped and ready to help under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Swipe. We are having a Christmas Eve service, say Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. That is next Saturday night. It's a candlelight service, one hour only from 6 o'clock to 7 p.m. Please come on out. It's going to be amazing. Invite your neighbors, your family, and your friends. A lot of people will come to church for Christmas. It's a great time for them to hear the gospel. Can you say amen? That's right. And then we're going to follow that on Christmas Day. We do not have a service Christmas morning. But we are going to have dinner here for those of you who may not have local family here in Central Florida. So if you don't have family and you want to spend church with a really cool family, hello, that's us, say amen. amen. Then we're going to serve dinner from 3 to 7 p.m. If you are planning on attending, listen carefully. You need to see Miss Lauren today so we can get an accurate count so we know how much. Are you ready? Are you listening? Prime rib to buy. <laughs> Suddenly, attendance just went up. <laughs> and she's going to assign the church what side items to bring. There's the, the cost to come to dinner is to bring something to eat, enough for at least your family and to share. We're anticipating 40 people for Christmas dinner. Now, a lot of that is the Moores, is Lauren's family. And so, but we figure out church is about almost up to 20 of that now, or 15 at least. So bring a side dish. See, Lauren, you need to make sure you meet with her today. Let's keep moving. 
21 days of prayer and fasting. You're going to hear more about this. If you would, go to foursquare.org, and there's an entire um, page of information. On you can you can download what the daily prayers are going to be, all kinds of things. So foursquare.org. Next. Women are meeting on January 15th after service here on campus. We are having a Valentine's Day dinner, more to be announced on that, on Saturday, February 11th. So we are super excited about that. It's going to be incredible. We're working on some final details. More on that later. Man Camp is up and running. Some of you have already registered. If you have any questions about Man Camp, come see me. It's in February. It's a weekend away from our families. Guys, listen to me. Wives, I say this with all due respect and love, but there's times we need to get, from, get away from our wives and our kids and just segregate ourselves among other men to hear the voice of the Lord. By the way, women, Christmas is coming. <laughs> For the man that has everything and you don't know what to buy, that's a pretty good gift. So you can register on our website at the storehouse.church. Go to the events tab. There's a link to the registration. If you want to send your man to main camp or your son, ages 15 up, or your pastor or anyone else, just send people to man camp. Can you do that? Say amen. amen. Next up. I've already registered and paid, by the way. I'm joking. <laughs> hey, the house, uh, we're making really slow progress. And I was talking to someone this week about it, and I honestly thought we'd have it done by now. And I, I heard myself saying the words, well, I'm pretty hopeful God still has a plan. <laughs> That's not a good place for your pastor to be. I'm really hopeful that God still has a plan. I know God has a plan. So here's the thing. I'm asking you to pray and ask God. Many of you have been obedient and you've, you've made a, a building fund donation. I'm telling you this morning, listen carefully. I'm closing my eyes so I can't see you. God knows that he's talking to some of you. You know he's talking to you. And some of you can write a check for 50 or 100. Some of you can write a check for thousands of, I mean thousands of dollars. I'm only asking you to ask God what to do. We've got to get this house done. Because once that done, we got stuff here we got to get done. Like redoing the fellowship hall and redoing this carpet and redoing this plant. We got a lot to do. But we need desperately to get the house finished. So will you pray about it? Say amen. amen. All right. So with that said, we're ready to receive offering. We've kept you long today. I apologize. But everything that happened, isn't it amazing how God just puts everything together from the very first song to the very last part of uh, Eric's message. God is an amazing God. Four ways to give in this church, tithing envelopes in the seat in front of you. You can go to our church app. You can go to the website. You can even text the word give to this number and give $10,000. It works that easy. It's so simple. <laughs> Stand with me as we dismiss today. Listen, we don't want you to run home. We still have some time for fellowship, so feel free to head out that door and turn left. Don't forget, today is the last day for our Christmas toy giveaway, so you guys get one more opportunity to step up and bless families in Central Florida. Miss Rachel's putting that together. There's some toys up here. Rachel, I saw things in the fellowship hall that people dropped off, so we still have things. Uh, if you can contribute today, see Miss Rachel. We'll get that going. Father, we love you today. We love you, love you, love you. We thank you for the presence of God in our midst. We thank you for such a powerful word outlining just how desperately you love us and want a relationship with us. Bring us close to you, I pray, Lord, this week in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Council members, don't forget we do have a